betting at KSU Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, as the Auburn Tigers open the 1978 season against Kansas State in 100-plus degree temperatures. The heat didn't seem to affect Auburn, though, as on the game's first series, this hit by Charles Wood and James McKinney popped the ball free. Rodney Bellamy claimed it, and the Tigers wasted little time converting. On third down, Charlie Trotman keeps for 19 yards to key Auburn's first score of the year. On the next possession, sophomore tailback James Brooks proved himself as the nation's leading all-purpose runner early in the season. Following this block by Christie, Brooks goes on to set the Auburn single-game rushing record against the Wildcats, gaining 226 yards on 30 carries. The defense was not to be forgotten as senior linebacker Donnie Givens grabs this interception. It sets up another Auburn score, Trotman hitting senior tight end Dick Haley on a 32-yard pass after faking the run. Midway through the second quarter, Brooks strikes again. Then with only 24 seconds showing in the first half, Trotman finds Rusty Bird in the end zone. And this spectacular catch gives Auburn a 35-12 halftime lead. Overwhelming heat begins to catch up with the Tigers in the second half, but keyed by Brooks and the five turnovers garnered by the defense, Auburn eased home a winner 45 to 32. Again on the road against Virginia Tech, Blacksburg proved a contrast to Kansas with cloudy skies and cold temperatures. the Tigers might continue their high-scoring tempo in the first quarter when sophomore tackle Frank Warren blocked this punt. But Auburn failed to convert, and at halftime, the Tigers trailed 7-6. In the second half, though, Auburn took the lead on a 55-yard drive when Trotman hit on three straight passes. This one to Rusty Bird. Finally finding Brooks for the touchdown. The defense sealed the game in the final quarter when Clifford Tony caused this fumble and Charles Wood recovered for the touchdown. The final score, Auburn 18, Virginia Tech 7. Tigers moved to Birmingham's Legion Field for a regionally televised game with the Tennessee Volunteers, a game which annually marks the first major SEC rivalry. Storming onto the field with a 7-0 first quarter lead, Auburn totally dominates the game. First, this 50-yard Trotman to Franklin toss set up a George Portella field goal. spectacular run by Brooks, keyed by a block on the corner by Rusty Bird, helped give the Tigers a 16 to nothing lead as the teams returned to their locker rooms at halftime.
Early in the second half, the Vols made a run, but plays like this by Cribs. And this Trotman to Franklin pass. Help these Auburn to victory. The final score, Auburn 29, the University of Tennessee 10. The Tigers were flying high after three consecutive victories on the road when they returned to Jordan-Hare Stadium to take on the University of Miami. Following a scoreless first period, Trotman finds Mark Robbins with his 43-yard bomb to the Hurricane 35. It marked the first time either team had crossed midfield. But a turnover cost Auburn the ball, and at the half, Miami leads 7 to nothing. Then early in the second half, it was Donnie Givens again with a big defensive play to put Auburn back in the game. This led to the tying touchdown, but Miami came right back with a 70-yard bomb, and the Hurricane led 14-7, moving to the fourth quarter. Then with only eight minutes remaining, the Tigers mounted an 80-yard drive, keyed by this pass from Trotman to Franklin. Joe Cribb scored the touchdown to pull Auburn within one point, and then this Trotman to Robbins pass apparently won the game on the two-point conversion. But All-American Otis Anderson ran for 42 yards on a fourth down play, and with less than a minute remaining, Miami snatched the game away with Dan Miller's field goal with only 10 seconds remaining on the clock. On the road again, Auburn travels to Music City, USA to play Vanderbilt, and on their first possession, the Tigers make it clear they plan to get back on the winning track, going 71 yards highlighted by Joe Cribb's nine-yard touchdown run. Then on Vandy's first offensive play, nose guard Marshall Riley causes a fumble in the backfield, and Jerry Beasley recovers. Again, Joe Cripps converts, rushing 20 yards to the end zone. Vandy's next possession, linebacker Freddie Smith blocks this punt to give Auburn the ball at the Vanderbilt 8-yard line. Setting up a third touchdown by Joe Cribbs in the first period. Midway through the second quarter, the Auburn defense grabs another Commodore turnover, and again, Joe Cribbs puts six points on the scoreboard on his way to a school record five touchdowns in one game. Late in the first half, with Auburn leading 28 to nothing, Vanderbilt pushed to the Auburn 24, only to have the drive halted in the end zone by this Allen Harden interception. In the second half, the Auburn bench showed its talent on plays like these runs, first by Chester Willis. And then senior Bob Fleming as Auburn coasted to a 49-7 victory.
crowd of 60,000 and a regional television audience was on hand in Jordan-Hare Stadium as Auburn and Georgia Tech renewed one of the nation's oldest rivalries. The momentum the Tigers showed in the Vanderbilt game was still evident as they covered 82 yards on the game's initial possession keyed by this burst by William Andrews. And Charlie Trotman's touchdown run. Tech came back to take a 21-7 lead in the third period when Harris Rayburn clutched this fumble, giving the Tigers the ball at the Tech 27. The defense almost keyed another comeback late in the game when Clifford Tony blocked this punt for an apparent Auburn touchdown, but a penalty nullified the play, and Georgia Tech came up a winner 24-10. Wake Forest visits Auburn on homecoming weekend and spirits of alums and players ran high as the Tigers picked up a 21-7 victory. The Deacons scored on their first possession, but Auburn came back late in the first quarter keyed on this reverse by Byron Franklin to tie the score. Midway through the second quarter, the Tigers began to control the game, helped by carries like this one by Joe Cribb. At the end of the first half neared, the Tigers put together a 69-yard drive in 82 seconds, highlighted by four straight pass completion, the longest going to Rusty Bird. Auburn had a seven-point advantage at intermission as enthusiastic fans were introduced to the homecoming court and Queen Claudia Thomason of Auburn. second half, this halfback pass from Cribs to Bird set up the final touchdown as Auburn rolled to a 21-7 homecoming win. Florida is normally pleasant and sunny in late October, but on this day, the Tigers ran into a band of gators intent on saving some pride in an otherwise disappointing season. After an early turnover gave Florida a 7-0 lead, this quarterback sack by Marshall Riley and Frank Warren tied the score. Then early in the second period, this Cribs run gave Auburn good field position. But a penalty halted that drive, and a series of Auburn turnovers put Florida in control of the game. The Tigers never gave up, though, mounting a late comeback effort behind plays such as this one by Clifford Tony. But the Gators were flying high today in more ways than one. The next week, the president's mother, Miss Lillian, who was a former Auburn house mother, was on hand for the Mississippi State game. And the Auburn defense, crippled by injuries after the Florida game, gave a sparkling performance with a shutout on the road. Freddie Smith, starting in the secondary, set the tone for the game on the Bulldogs' first series with this punishing hit. Then freshman Bob Harris, making his first start, intercepted this pass and returned to the state 23-yard line. It set up a George Portella field goal, which eventually proved to be the winning points. 
Time after time, State went to the air against the inexperienced Tiger secondary. But plays like this one by Bob Harris. And this interception by Jerry Beasley as the half ended kept the dogs at bay. The second half saw more of the same by the defense as first Harris Rayburn. Then Big Frank Warren. Then Clifford Tony. And again, Bob Harris made big plays as the game ended to clinch a six to nothing win. Harris was named UPI Defensive Player of the Week for his 17 tackles and two interceptions. And Auburn clinched a winning season with a six to nothing victory over Mississippi State in Starkville. An all time record of more than 64,000 fans jammed Jordan Hare Stadium as Auburn and Georgia met in what is one of the biggest games for both teams every season. For the first time in 25 years, Auburn was dressed in orange. The Bulldogs were looking to clinch a Sugar Bowl berth, while an Auburn victory would put the Tigers against Alabama for that bid. After a seesaw first quarter with Georgia leading 6 to nothing on two field goals, this play got the Tigers out of a deep hole with a spectacular run by Joe Cribbs. The Tigers were unable to convert, but moments later, Cribbs gave Auburn the lead with another 60-yard sprint on his way to a single-game Auburn record of 250 yards. Georgia came back to take a 12 to 7 lead, setting up a controversial play. As time ran out in the half, William Andrews found a hole up the middle, then moved behind this block by Mark Robbins. But officials ruled him down short of the goal line. The Tigers returned after the intermission, determined to take the lead, which they did in short order on this twisting sideline run by Charlie Trotman. Then with a score tied 15 to 15, Trotman found Robbins free down the near sideline to set up the go-ahead touchdown. When Georgia threatened late in the third quarter, the defense came up with a big play on this interception by Clifford Tony. And again in the fourth quarter on this play by Harris Rayburn after the school was tied. On the last play of the game, the Auburn defense again came up with a crucial turnover. Time had expired, and the Tigers had to settle for a tie, knocking both Auburn and Georgia out of the running for the conference title. The final score, Auburn 22, Georgia 22. Legion Field in Birmingham. The 
scene of the nation's fiercest rivalry. After Alabama takes an early 7-0 lead, Auburn drives 81 yards to tie the score, keyed by Charlie Trotman. First passing to Byron Franklin. Then running for a key first down. Fourth and three at the Alabama 25, Auburn shocked the 70,000 in attendance with this fake field goal pass from Foster Christie to William Andrews, setting up a touchdown run by Joe Chris. After Alabama moved back in front 10 to seven, safety Clifford Tony made this interception, giving the Tigers good field position. That field position resulted in a drive highlighted first by this tremendous effort by Robbins. Followed by two straight Cribs carries into the end zone. This game climaxed a tremendous season for Joe Cribs, who set Auburn records for most yards in a single game, most yards rushing in a season, 1,205, and most rushing yards in a career, 2,248, with another season of eligibility remaining. Joe scored 98 points and led the Southeastern Conference in rushing. And for these achievements, Cribs was named SEC Back of the Year by the Birmingham Quarterback Club. 1978 was a winning season at Auburn. With a final record of 6-4-1, the Tigers have improved each year under head coach Doug Barfield. And with 16 starters and 46 lettermen returning in 1979, along with a schedule featuring six games in Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn looks forward to September, to football Saturdays, and to football excellence.